So you've got MLOps installed, went through your first few setups, and now asking yourself, what more is there that I can do? And in my opinion, the way we implemented MLOps, that differs from a few other implementation of diffusion libraries in Houdini that I've seen, is that we open up the internal data to manipulate and play with it. One such example is prompt blending. So to build that, let's drop down a geo node, dive in there, and let's start with a prompt create. And in here, I will just prompt for a high quality color photo of a king on a throne. Let's just copy and paste this. And in here, let's prompt for the photo of a queen on a throne. Like this. Both need a tokenizer. So let's wire those in here and in here respectively. And of course, a text encoder. Let's also copy those. As for a negative prompt, I want to use the same prompt for both of these encoders. So let's just copy these two nodes here. And as a negative prompt, I'll just paste a list ugly, mangled, bad, disfigured, low detail, and cheap. And these negative prompts go into both these inputs here. Let's just quickly build the rest of our setup by dropping down a scheduler. And for now, let's just wire in the queen in here. Also, let's generate some latent noise using the extremely random seed of one, two, three, which goes in the second slot of the scheduler. Then let's attach a solver. And finally, after that, an image decoder. So fingers crossed, let's solve that. And let's reframe those points, pressing space and H. Well, it's something. Let's on the scheduler, maybe increase our CFG scale to nine and also our number of inference steps to 32. Well, well, let's make sure we are using stable diffusion 2.1 in here. So after that's been downloaded, let me just switch to manual update in order to make sure that all of my nodes here have stable diffusion 2.1 selected the scheduler as well solver and image decoder all right let's rerun this yeah and that is more what i'd expect let's just also try for prompting for the king and yes that seems to have worked as well all right what if we want to blend smoothly blend between our king and our queen well in our text encoder the prompt has been encoded in those two numbers, conditional embeddings and an unconditional embedding. And those are just float numbers. And each of those points stores one float number for a conditional embedding and one for an unconditional embedding. So basically, this is a vector that has 87,884 dimensions. And to blend between those vectors, all we can do is use a point wrangle. Let's just set our view flag on here and wire in both the king and the queen prompt in those two input slots in here. And in here, what I can do is just blend between those values for the conditional and the unconditional embedding. So let's just load up this unconditional and conditional embedding from this point here. Let's call this one unconditional, uncommed. And let's just use the point function to look that up on a currently active point that we're running over. Let me just check. Unconditional underscore embedding should be the right name. Let's just copy and paste that and turn this into the conditional embedding. I'm just calling and looking up the conditional embedding on these points here. Let's create a slider with which we can blend in between. So let's call this one bias. And let's create a float slider and let's call it maybe just blend. Let's click here to create that float slider. And if I drag down here, I've got this blend slider here, ranging between zero and one, exactly what I want. Now let's use this with a simple lerp, a linear interpolation to write out our new unconditional underscore embedding, which equals to the linear interpolation. And we are using this as the first value and then our unconned here as a second value. So we're going to blend between those and we're going to use the bias as a blending factor. All right, let's copy and paste this and modify it so it actually reads the correct values like this, I think. Okay, and now let's set the blend value to, I don't know, 0 0.33. Let's solve this again. And clearly something in our image has changed. In order to see what's changed, let's maybe animate that by adding a cache node after our image decoder and maybe increase the cache a bit. And then up here in the point wrangle, let's just animate this blend between zero, control, alt click in here to set a keyframe. And then let's go to frame number 50 and in here set this value to one. Again, alt click in here and maybe shift click to bring up the curve editor. And I wanna just make this curve linear by selecting it and then clicking on this button here. All right, let's set the view flag on the cache. And in this case, I'll just run the animation backwards until we're at frame one and until everything is cached. All right, let's see what we have. And we can see we've got this transition between the king and the queen, although it kind of happens abruptly in the middle here. So maybe we want to tweak our blend curve here so that in between 59 and 61, we get a few more versions of this. But this is how you blend prompts and traverse the latent space with prompts, as it's sometimes called. And while we're at it, we can do a few fun things with prompts. 
or the prompt embeddings. For example, let's just copy this whole geo node here. And after setting the view flag on it, again, diving in here, let's try something called prompt arithmetic. Let's give ourselves some space up here and copy this third row here one more time. And also let's wire this output into the third input of our point wrangle. So what I want to do is do some arithmetic with the embeddings, which are vectors pointing in the direction of semantically clustered data. So what I can do is take this prompt here, high quality color photo of a king on a throne, and then let's turn this second prompt here just into queen, no, actually man, and let's turn the third prompt here into a woman. And what I want to do now is take this prompt, the first one here, high quality color photo of a king on a throne, and from it subtract man and add to it woman. And fingers crossed, this should result in a queen. So in our point wrangle down here, we need two more inputs. So let's call these one unconned one and conned one, copy and paste them and call those unconned two and con two and just point them to the third input slot. We do not need the blend function here, but what I want to do is take my unconditional embeddings and from them subtract the unconned one. Remember that's the one that contains the vectors for man. Let's put those in parentheses and add to them the unconditional embeddings of our third prompt remember woman. And finally, let's normalize this by dividing by three like this. Let's just take this and copy this line here, paste it down here into the same for the conditionals like so. All right, let's again, save this fingers crossed and put the view flag on our SD image decode. And well, actually, I don't have to normalize this. That's a mistake by me. That stems from another setup where I averaged these three prompts. So now I'm getting something that looks, let's call it queen ish. And if we just play around with our seed here, well, we always arrive at something that looks in between a king or a queen. So, so let's try modifying our arithmetic here by multiplying our weights here for the unconditional and the conditional embeddings. So just multiplying those by two. And let's see. Well, that's what I call a queen. Again, let's try with a few more seeds. And indeed, that is working. So as you see, it's absolutely possible to do simple arithmetic operations with our prompt embeddings, and thus driving our image generation into directions that we might have a hard time expressing using natural human language. I mean, the king and queen example here, of course, could be expressed in language. But think of what happens when you, for example, take an elephant and subtract from it a giraffe. I think it'd be quite enlightening, funny, or just plain weird to see what comes out of this. So if you find any odd creations lying in the latent space here in the embeddings, just share them. And if you want to participate in the development of MLOps, looking for help or like-minded people, you might want to join our Discord server, whose link you'll find on our GitHub page. So far, I hope you're having fun with this and goodbye.